mostly it was family, and the family stayed there. Yeah. Between Tony, Phil, Everett, uh, my uncle Purse worked there, and then the cousins, you know, my cousin Bruce, Peter, and myself. Well, my grandfather, he started it. He was in Freeport, like in the 20s, but he was a house builder. He built houses in Freeport. And then uh, the Depression hit, and they went out to Hampton Bays and started a boatyard out there. They ran that boatyard approximately for about 10 years. Then they sailed into Freeport with a boat that he built. It was a 50-foot wooden boat. It was like a work boat, so whatever machinery they could put on the boat, sailed into Freeport, came up Woodcliffe Canal, and just took a piece of property. Then he made a deal with Slocum, who owned the property where Mariska's Boatyard is today. And I think he had another little piece of property down at the head of the canal, down by the schooner. And he swapped him that piece for the Mariska Boatyard parcel and the boat. And then they started building Mareska's Boatyard in 1938. And it was uh, my grandfather and the three brothers, Tony, Phil, and Everett. That building was constructed in, it was up and ready in 1968. And the reason they built that building is because they were really into refurbishing boats at the time. And they needed an indoor facility for the winter to keep things going, you know, in the slow months. So it worked out well because they could drive the travel lift across the street and drive the travel lift right into the building, which was kind of unique at the time. My first job was, of course, everybody started at the bottom, literally. And we were bottom painters when we were kids. So, you know, the boats had to be caulked and painted. And that's what I did when I first started. It was probably 1961. And I was 11 years old then. And they also had, beside Moresca's boatyard on Woodcliffe, they had another boatyard on Hudson. And my father ran that at the time. And they had railways and they pulled boats. And it, it was a fair size yard. So they had just hauled a boat called the Jolly. And it was a charter boat. It was about 48 foot. And I was looking up at this boat like I was looking at the Titanic. I'm going, oh my God, look at the size of this boat. And my father said to me, we're going to scrub the bottom on this boat. So I says, okay, how do we do that? And he goes, sand, a brush, and water. It took me an entire day. I was 11 years old to scrub this bottom. So I learned at an early age how to work. Well, the most important thing was to do the job right. And don't cut corners. Because the minute you cut corners, you're lost. And I learned that as a young kid. He instilled that in me. And do the job right, do it once, and do it to the best of your ability. Uh, well, we worked on various types. We worked on commercial fishing boats, dragons. We worked on charter boats. We worked on yachts, all different types. I mean, you know, you could go from mahogany speedboats all the way up to 57 foot Chris Rafts and everything in between. But most of the boats that I worked on as a young boy was uh, wooden boats. Well, all the Moreskas were Italian. So we come from Italian descent. And uh, I remember that when they used to hire contractors, they were mostly like Eastern European. And they were craftsmen. My Uncle Phil, he was, uh, he was a wild guy too. And he wasn't afraid to tackle anything. And he used to have a hydroplane, not, you know, it wasn't a gold cup, like Lombardo. But I remember he used to come down Woodcliffe Canal at 95 miles an hour in his hydroplane. And it was direct drive. And he would shut it off by autos and it just coast into the bow yard. Maybe just pull into the slip. One time he was on his way into the city and we had the tempo and the slings. And I was painting, touching up the bottom where the blocks were. And I remember he came down and he bent over and he go, how's it going, kid? And he kind of startled me. And with a flick of the brush, I got bottom paint all over his suit. 
And then my uncle came out and he started screaming at me, you dopey kid, what are you doing? And then Guy Lombardo, all he said, he goes, leave him alone, Tony. I startled him. He goes, I got plenty of other suits. I'll go home and change. <laughs> <laughs>